And for more on all these market moves and gyrations from Sydney, Australia, we're now joined by Savanth Sebastian, an economist at Comsec. Thanks for joining us, Savanth. Thanks, Michelle. Well, as we just discussed, the PBOC cut its key lending rate by 25 basis points. It also cut the amount of cash that banks must keep in reserve, so effectively freeing them to lend more cash. Now, European markets rallied on this. U.S. markets had a very volatile day, ultimately closing in the red. And what's interesting is that the PBOC said very clearly that the move was intended to, quote, promote and support sustainable and healthy developments of the real economy, the real economy. But this was seen as a reaction to the market. What do you make of the PBOC's move? Yeah, it was interesting, Michelle, that it actually took place after the Asian markets closed. I think the PBOC was trying to make a statement that they're not out there to try and curb stock market moves and really the volatility in the Chinese stock market. Their goal is really to focus on liquidity issues and try to support that broader real economy story. And to do that, well, they're talking about cutting these sort of interest rates and in particular those cuts to the reserve ratio for finance companies, car leasing companies. It just highlights that they're trying to spur lending and spur activity. Now, I look at this uh, Chinese economics uh, uh, environment at the moment, and I, I, I believe that it's, uh, you know, it's teething issues. You've really got an economy that's shifting quite dramatically from sort of heavy industry manufacturing to a service uh, domestic consumption story. And just like any economy, even Australia here, where we've got a mining, we had a mining boom, and that's off the agenda now, it, it creates these teething issues that you need to get over. And an economy like China growing at 7% with a population of 1.3 billion uh, and importantly inflation under check there's a lot of stimulus that can be applied this is the only the initial stages of that stimulatory story and I think we're comfortable about the long-term growth story for China but certainly in the short term this volatility is here to stay well a lot of the volatility that we've been seeing in markets outside of China in the in Europe and in the US has been attributed to the volatility in China's stock market. Now, let's keep in mind that China's stock market is not a big part of the Chinese economy, certainly not as, as it is for other global economies. The stock market plays a much smaller role in China's economy than the U.S. stock market does in the U.S. It has fewer connections to the rest of the economy. And what's interesting is when the Shanghai Composite was rallying and was up 150 percent year over year, well, then analysts were saying that the market does not reflect the fundamentals of the economy. So why do you think the Chinese market moves now are being linked so strongly to the Chinese economy and, you know, extended to the global economy and therefore to global markets? Yeah, Michelle, I think it came on the back of those flash PMI reads that showed that growth activity levels were at the weakest levels in six years. So the, the issue is that I think a lot of analysts and traders across the globe have been expecting China to have a soft landing approach. Now, if you start seeing concerns around a hard landing, well, the uncertainty and panic is what's driving the volatility in markets that we're seeing at the moment. Now, I think that this Chinese story... Um, importantly has a long way to play out in terms of growth. The one concern you'd have is that if, as you mentioned, the Chinese stock market, it's, it's, it's a financial market movement, but if it shifts through to the real economy, that's where your concerns lie. You've seen this huge lift in margin lending in China um, and certainly a lot more Chinese uh, domestic households investing in the market. That can have a impact on real spending. So at the moment, it doesn't seem to be taking place. But the longer it goes on, the more the impact can be. And the PBOC's decision overnight to try and stimulate lending is trying to alleviate those pressures around uh, what they may potentially see down the track when it comes to retail activity. Well, the Chinese economy, as we said, uh, has some teething issues. It's an adjustment and it's what to be expected. But I want to ask you, if what we saw is a reaction to the Chinese economies, why in the U.S. did we see so many Chinese economy-linked companies that have ADRs in the U.S. markets or are listed in U.S. markets do well today? Alibaba up 4.2 percent, China Mobile up 1.6 percent, Agricultural Bank of China also in the green, BYD. All of these Chinese companies that are perhaps barometers of the Chinese economy were in the green. What do you make of that? Yeah, look, I, I think that the Chinese stock market will start to find its feet 
Um, certainly further downside risks are there. But the reason those companies rallied is purely because of those cuts by this PBOC and the improvements it, it hopes it will foster across those uh, across the market. But I think what people are getting mixed up with is that the collapse or the slide in US stocks overnight was linked uh, to the Chinese story. I mean, the rally was certainly euphoric, but the Dow futures were up long before the PBOC came out and highlighted that they were going to be cutting rates. We saw the rally in the early part of that US trading session, but it fell away in the last hour because the rally wasn't convincing on its own. You've got a stronger US dollar, you've got long-term US interest rates which are rising, which which are not great for US business. There's the uncertainty around the Fed. Um, and, and the other burning fact for the US at the moment is no doubt that you've had this huge collapse in US stock markets. There was a lot of margin pressure that was coming into play. And uh, I've heard a lot of speculation that in that last hour of trade, uh, a lot of brokers were calling clients about those margin calls, Savannah. front up cash or pay up in stock. And the, and, and the option was to sell off and uh, sell down those margin positions. All right. We're going to have to leave it there. Of course, we're very curious to see what you think uh, the Asian market reaction will be. Thank you so much, Savannah Sebastian, an economist at ComSec.